Um, the next presentation then is laparoscopic excision and hepaticoduodenostomy for cholidocal cyst in children, a single surgeon experience of 31 cases by Chandra, sorry, Chandra Shum. I'm sorry, I've missed that. You can call me Chandra, that's okay. Uh, good morning. Um, I'll present our experience with laparoscopic excision of cholidocal cyst and uh, hepaticoduodenostomy. Uh, we use four ports with complete sixth excision. Uh, the duodenum is cauterized extensively so that we perform a duodenotomy away from the pylorus at the junction of the first and second portions of the duodenum and a single layer interrupted hepaticoduodenostomy is constructed. Uh, the important point is we, we cover the anastomosis, uh, the suture line with momentum. We had 31 children over a four year period they're all type one cholidocal cysts. With the, uh, the smallest baby was uh, two months. Uh, there was one giant cholidocal cyst with 14 centimeter size and one ruptured cyst with bile peritonitis. This is a giant cholidocal cyst. You can see the giant cyst with about one and a half liters of bile, which could be completely excised. The child also had hypertension, portal hypertension, hypersplenism, and pancytopenia. We took about two and a half hours an average time. Uh, there were no major complications. There was no bile leak or pancreatic leak. Uh, there was no cholangitis or clinical bile gastritis on follow-up. We performed hepatobiliary scintigraphy as a non-invasive uh, uh, investigation to diagnose asymptomatic duodenogastric reflux. We found that 11% of our children had asymptomatic duodenogastric reflux. So we conclude that laparoscopic excision of cholidocal cysts with hepaticoduodenostomy is a safe and effective procedure, even in complex patients. The covering the suture line with omentum prevented bile leak in all patients. There was no symptomatic duodenogastric reflux in our series. About 11%, that is not a very high, it's much lower incidence than reported in literature of asymptomatic duodenogastric reflux. Thank you very much. That's a very nice presentation. We'll take any questions. Is the highest scan part of your routine post-operative evaluation in all patients? Uh, we actually started doing this after there were some reports of high incidence of duodenogastric reflux after hepatic or duodenostomy. So we started doing this prospectively. I was doing, uh, even when I was doing open cholidocal cyst resections, I was doing a hepatic or duodenostomy. So we never had any clinically symptomatic patients with duodenogastric reflex. So we did not want to do an invasive test like endoscopy to look for gastric you know, erosions and evidence of DGR. So the simplest thing was to do a non-invasive test of hepatobiliary disintegraphy. Yes. Very good information, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.